Hi, what is machine learning development profession all about? Have you ever wondered if it's possible to transition from Java developer to machine learning profession? So uh, today we are diving in the exciting world of machine learning. My name is Anastasia and I'm very thrilled to welcome here today Victoria, uh, our today's speaker. Uh, and today we have discussion on uh, building career in machine learning. And uh, so Victoria, how are you? Uh, are you ready to talk a little bit about Java and transition from Java into machine learning? Yeah, sure. I'm great. I'm happy to be here and I would love to share my story with our viewers and probably it would be useful for someone who are thinking of similar transition. Great. So go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vika, and in today's talk, I would like to uh, share with you some uh, details about my career journey from Java software engineering to machine learning. I will discuss how I made this transition, what motivated me to do so, uh, which obstacles I faced during this journey, and uh, some pros and cons of um, such uh, transition. Uh, additionally, I will share with you some resources that really helped me uh, throughout this uh, transition, and I hope that it would be useful for some of you. Okay, so let's move on and let me briefly introduce my background. Uh, I worked as a Java engineer for four years uh, and then I transitioned to machine learning. Currently, I've been working in this field for two and a half years and I would like to talk uh, a little bit about the motivation behind this change. So I would say that for a long time, machine learning fascinated me. There were a lot of articles and news about some cutting edge technologies like self-driving cars or predicting cancer using machine learning or even translating ancient manuscripts using machine learning. And it, uh, all of this was so exciting and inspiring and I was definitely drawn to this field. And uh, you can see a picture uh, that uh, shows uh, what uh, I think I do. It definitely uh, very clearly depicts uh, my um, imagination about uh, career in machine learning. And everyone around was talking that it is the hottest job of the 21st century and uh, the, uh, it's even uh, further fueled my interest. So when the opportunity uh, arose, I decided to pursue it and to make a switch to machine learning. And here I would like to highlight one very important idea. As many of you might already know that there are interesting parts of um, job in software engineering, for example, and boring parts of this job. And towards the end of my career in Java development, there definitely were more uh, tedious tasks uh, than exciting ones. And I felt a little bit overwhelmed with these boring tasks. And I had an idea that probably if I made this transition to machine learning, which is uh, such a cutting edge sphere and new technologies, then everything will be exciting 24 7 again. But I uh, would like to uh, tell you that it definitely was a misconception. Uh, every job definitely has its interesting parts and not that interesting parts. And you should uh, be aware of it and don't be deceived by uh, this image of a very interesting and brand new sphere like machine learning, for example, because in this job you uh, still uh, will be facing some tedious uh, routine tasks and I believe there is no job in the world uh, consisting only of uh, exciting tasks. Uh, it's always a combination. Uh, so please take this into account when you're thinking about a uh, similar career journey, for example. And now let's discuss uh, some pros and cons uh, of transitioning from Java to machine learning. I would like to begin with cons. From my perspective, there are three main challenges when transitioning from Java to machine learning. 
and first is the number of career opportunities. The second is the huge gap in knowledge that you need to cover during such uh, change. And uh, the third challenge is the immense variety of machine learning ranging from tools to areas, uh, algorithms. Um, and I would like to cover the, all these points in more details. So let's take a closer look. Let's start with the first challenge, which is the number of career opportunities. In my experience, there are significantly uh, fewer job openings for data scientists than for Java developers. And as you can see from this screenshot uh, from Glassdoor, uh, there are almost three times more job postings for Java developers than for data scientists. And it, uh, it is an important factor to consider uh, because despite the job being interesting and exciting it might be difficult to find a new position a new project and um, to switch companies uh, due to lower demand for such specialists uh, and it's a really important consideration to keep in mind when you consider such career change let's discuss the second drawback which is gap in skills in this slide, I've listed uh, the most important skills for machine learning. Uh, and first and foremost is definitely the knowledge of machine learning itself. Uh, by this, I mean algorithms and approaches uh, used to deal with different problems in this area. Uh, you will need to familiarize yourself with these techniques uh, and be really confident with this. Secondly, statistics and probability, uh, including concepts like hypothesis testing, confidence intervals and distributions. These are essentials uh, and uh, I would say that it is a foundation for uh, deep understanding of machine learning algorithms and you need to master it. Uh, additionally, core Python skills are very important because Python is de facto standard in machine learning industry and uh, as a data scientist or machine learning engineer you will be required to write a lot of code in Python and uh, you will need to dedicate some time uh, for learning it. Next is SQL and it's also crucial for the data science uh, because you definitely would work with data and you will uh, need a, a tool set for querying data, aggregating, uh, uh, doing some analysis and from my experience uh, you probably would face uh, quite complicated um, SQL queries uh, during your work as a machine learning engineer so definitely take some time to dive into it. And uh, next, uh, I would say that Python frameworks are definitely uh, one of the most important skills for a uh, machine learning engineer because um, it will allow you to use algorithms that you learned previously with just a few lines of code and uh, to apply it to real life problems. So uh, something like Pandas, NumPy, uh, PyTorch are very, very important for this job. And uh, lastly, uh, the knowledge of uh, clouds uh, and infrastructure are also, uh, is also very important. And uh, nowadays it's not enough just to uh, find the best algorithm and to train some model to uh, deal with this task. You uh, need to take care of it, to deploy it to production, to maintain it there. and clouds uh, and infrastructure uh, skills will come in handy during these tasks. Okay, so uh, now let's take a look at skills uh, that you likely already have as a Java developer and then we will cover uh, some of them you need to acquire. So, as a Java developer, you are likely to have uh, a solid foundation in computer science fundamentals, which is amazing. You probably also have a good understanding of web technologies like REST, uh, microservice architecture, as well as some experience with Docker, cloud infrastructure and SQL, I believe. And this skill set profile is a great starting point for a career in machine learning, but still <laughs> there are something, uh, some more skills that you need to master. And let's take a look at them. So you definitely need to look through statistics, machine learning, Python and everything around Python, as I mentioned earlier. 
And it is important here to note that machine learning, uh, learning machine learning algorithms uh, could be quite challenging because it requires uh, a lot of um, knowledge in math, uh, solid background in calculus, linear algebra, uh, statistics and probability. And it is crucial for a machine learning engineer to have um, a really good understanding of what's going under the hood of these algorithms because it will help you to choose the best tool for each task to understand uh, some problems that uh, might appear during your development. And um, I would like to mention that it might be quite a tough journey. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether you would like to focus on math first and then uh, dive into machine learning or just learn it on the go, for example, when you are uh, discovering some new algorithm and face uh, some idea from linear algebra, for example, and it is unfamiliar for you. You can just divert to, uh, to linear algebra, explore this uh, topic in more details and then get back to machine learning. So. Um, I would say that probably it's uh, the uh, most time-consuming uh, part of uh, transitioning to machine learning, especially uh, gaining these skills um, in machine learning algorithms and building your expertise. And it might be a little bit frustrating because you might be a really great software engineer with solid background in uh, engineering, but still uh, you will need to dedicate a lot of time to uh, learn these new topics. So um, I would say uh, that this funny picture here uh, accurately depicts uh, the situation, so be aware of the challenges ahead. Now let's discuss variability of machine learning. Uh, and it's definitely immense, <laughs> ranging from tools to different areas in machine learning. And there are so many areas in machine learning, such as computer vision, natural language processing, recommender systems, classical machine learning. And each of these areas have plenty of tools, of algorithms, and uh, you will need to explore it and understand. And additionally, uh, uh, each area solves um, unique problems using specific instruments for these problems, which adds uh, a little bit of complexity. And um, I would say that uh, it's quite different from uh, Java world. Um, from my experience as a Java developer, uh, my day-to-day -day work was uh, enough to um, find a new position or a new project to switch company because at least from uh, my background, uh, I um, saw that Java world uh, is quite similar from company to company. And usually the knowledge of Java, of a Spring ecosystem, Spring Boot, Docker and SQL uh, was enough to secure me a new opportunity. And it's quite different in uh, machine learning from my perspective uh, because for example if you're working with tabular data it would be quite uh, challenging for you to find a job in computer vision for example because approaches are very different and uh, the tools they use are also very different and um, changing jobs can be challenging in machine learning and um, keeping in mind that in general, there are a fewer uh, job openings for data scientists. Um, it even adds uh, more <laughs> pressure. Uh, so I think that it's another important consideration to keep in mind. Okay, now then when you're probably absolutely convinced that machine learning is not for you and it's a total nightmare, let's explore some of the pros of um, diving into this area. And first of all, it's important to acknowledge that machine learning is an incredibly fascinating and stimulating field uh, and the range of tasks and challenges within machine learning is very vast and varied and it provides uh, a lot of opportunities for growth, for exploration and I would say that a lifetime of learning wouldn't be enough to explore everything and uh, if you have an appetite 
for learning new things constantly, if you like, if you don't like to be bored, uh, then probably it might be a great field for you. And I would say that working uh, in this field uh, would eliminate any dangers of getting Alzheimer because probably you would learn new things till the end of your career. One more thing worth mentioning here is a growing number of startups in this area. And I'm sure you've heard a lot about new companies in this sector and uh, that uh, there are new ideas and it is uh, very interesting and exciting and you can be a part of it. And while the math knowledge required for machine learning may initially seem daunting, it can actually uh, be seen as a positive ex uh, aspect. Uh, by gaining a deeper understanding of uh, math concepts, you will be able to um, work more thoughtfully and effectively. And um, this um, diversity, uh, this um, great um, amount of areas and domains in machine learning uh, is also a good thing because it's um, not uh, that easy to get bored uh, here because you always have a lot of uh, opportunities to change your career path, to change sphere, to new, uh, learn new things and I believe that it's amazing. So. Let's cover each point in details. First of all, it's just plain interesting. I mean, despite all the challenges, there are so many cool stuff going on in machine learning and you can uh, work with such interesting things like self-driving cars or chat GPT or use machine learning to uh, heal diseases. And it's just mind blowing that it is possible to be a part of it, you know? And uh, I think that it can be a great motivator for you to push through all the tough parts because at the end of the day uh, you have a reason to do so and you are getting closer to these amazing opportunities and uh, jobs and let's be real it's just pretty cool to work in machine learning imagine telling your friends that you've been working on an algorithm for self-driving cars and now they drive safer and with more accuracy i believe that it's hard to top up so Let's move to the next point and talk about startups in this industry. Um, have you noticed how many of them are popping up uh, every day? Uh, I would say that the growth of uh, startups in this area uh, is huge. And as you can see from this picture on the left, it shows the uh, total funding of startups uh, in uh, artificial intelligence uh, globally. And as you can see, this uh, amount is uh, raising every year and it is um, a really uh, a very dynamic field. And for example, on the right picture, you can see the number of uh, Series A deals and exits by sector. And as you can see, the circle for artificial intelligence and big data is among the biggest uh, and it shows uh, solid uh, growth so um, it's uh, undoubtedly that there are a lot of startups in this area and uh, they are dealing with a lot of interesting things and I believe that uh, the most exciting part about it is that everyone with um, Required with the right skills can be a part of it and uh, can join uh, all these amazing uh, companies. So if you enjoy working in such a dynamic background and interesting in such opportunities, that this might be an additional um, point uh, for considering uh, machine learning. And probably you even uh, can get rich by joining some uh, company that is building uh, the next big thing. Okay, let's move on to the next one and uh, talk about um, another great aspect of machine learning, which is uh, the diverse range of areas and domains it can be applied to. It's pretty amazing how machine learning is used almost in every industry and there are countless business tasks that can be solved using machine learning, uh, a, which means a plenty of opportunities for the ones who have right skills. Uh, here I listed some of the examples uh, from different areas. Some companies are using machine learning for different tasks like recommender systems or self-driving cars. Uh, and 
you can be the po uh, a part of all, all these uh, amazing things. And I would say that machine learning is defi uh, definitely can be applied to almost every industry. And I have a bonus uh, example for you. Uh, so uh, if you think that machine learning is just for some, I don't know, high tech fields, high tech companies, that's definitely not the true. Uh, consider a Belarusian uh, startup, OneSoil, uh, which uh, uses machine learning to revolutionize uh, agriculture. I believe that Agriculture uh, might seem like a very traditional, very natural and not that high-tech industry. And even with this, um, there are people who try to use machine learning. And one soil proved that uh, it might be used for remotely uh, monitor crops, increase yields and reduce costs associated with seeds and fertilizers. Uh, so I think that it's a powerful demonstration how these tools can unlock new opportunities for innovation, even in a very traditional areas. Now let's talk about the different roles that exist in machine learning world and what they entail. Uh, one of the most popular uh, roles is probably a machine learning engineer or a data scientist. These terms are usually used interchangeable uh, and um, Despite this role being the most popular, uh, there are a lot of other roles uh, in machine learning world and I would say the, the combination of math skills, development skills and domain knowledge uh, will result in different roles. Um, let's cover a little bit uh, these uh, roles in more details. A machine learning engineer needs to have a good understanding of machine learning algorithms and uh, the uh, fundamentals of it, but I would say that probably not uh, at the same depth as machine learning researcher, for example, who creates new um, approaches and algorithms in machine learning. Uh, the engineer needs to know the strengths and the weaknesses of each approach and understand how to apply these algorithms to real-life problems uh, and uh, when to use each algorithm. And I would say that that uh, would be enough for an engineer. Also, an uh, engineer would need uh, to have um, great um, skills in coding and uh, deploying, uh, because nowadays uh, you need to take care of all of these parts. Uh, so skills from Java background, for example, will definitely be uh, very, very useful in this uh, career. Additionally, there are some other opportunities like data analyst or data engineer, and you can explore it in more details and find uh, if probably these roles are a better fit for your skills. Um, I would not uh, talk too much about them because I do not have uh, enough experience with it, so I will cover machine learning. Also, I would like to mention that there is a recent trend in machine learning called MLOps or uh, machine learning operations, which involves performing DevOps uh, activities in machine learning field. Uh, this role requires a solid understanding of uh, DevOps practices uh, and some exposure to machine learning world, but definitely not that deep as, for example, for machine learning engineer. And I would say that uh, the um, this uh, trend for MLOps um, is based on uh, the maturity of many machine learning algorithms uh, that, that nowadays uh, a lot of tools can be used just out of the box and do not require a lot of understanding uh, what is happening inside. So um, that's why uh, machine learning um, operations engineers uh, are now really required for a lot of um, companies. So probably this role might be a good for, uh, fit for you. You can just take a look at it. Uh, now let's discuss the differences between software engineering and machine learning engineering. In my experience, uh, machine learning is much more research oriented and um, it involves exploring and finding a value for a customer or project uh, and includes much more uncertainty than software engineering. While in software engineering, um, usually you have a defined scope of tasks. In machine learning, there are 
uh, many situations when you need to research something to check if uh, this makes sense, if it can bring some value to your project. And there is no defined pipeline for dealing with such cases. And it requires a lot of creativity and research thinking. Uh, another significant difference is that in machine learning there is uh, more interaction with business side of the project. Uh, depending uh, on the position, you may need to present your findings uh, to product managers or business analysts uh, and it requires the ability uh, to explain complex uh, concepts uh, to non-technical audience and it means that uh, great soft skills and presentation skills are essential for this job and I would say that uh, it applies even to entry-level positions because in my experience even junior data scientists present their findings uh, to the business side of the project. Um, another important note here is that a lot of work in machine learning just goes nowhere. It might be sad and frustrating that you spend a lot of time and effort, for example, on testing some hypothesis uh, just to find out that it doesn't work. <laughs> I would say that it's a really, really sad. Uh, the next topic I would like to cover is day-to-day -day tasks uh, and examples uh, of some tasks that you might encounter on your job as a data scientist or machine learning engineer. When I first considered uh, this transition to um, machine learning, uh, I was wondering how my day-to-day -day job might look like, which task I would solve uh, on a daily basis. So I thought that it might be helpful uh, to provide some examples uh, to give you a taste of what it's like. Uh, one common task might be to add new feature to the model. Uh, this involves um, several steps like data collection, pre-processing, um, adding this feature to uh, data pipelines, uh, to model logic, uh, checking that everything works okay, that the metrics are great and uh, testing it and then deploying to production. It is a well-defined task and it's quite similar to some tasks uh, you um, might get to, uh, you might uh, find in software engineering. Another example is researching whether a particular data might be helpful and valuable for our model and for example might improve the quality of our model. Uh, it involves formulating a hypothesis, uh, uh, determining if there is a correlation, for example, between uh, your target uh, variable and uh, this new data, uh, checking if the data is in correct format, if we can use it, um, and uh, if, it's, um, if there are enough data, um, and it's a little bit more research-oriented task. Another example of research-oriented task is, for example, to uh, determine the algorithm we might use for interpret uh, the model output. Actually, it's a real-life example from my project. A colleague of mine worked on such task, and I would say that probably it's um, a really interesting task that will require a lot of work from your side. Um, and you will need to uh, discover different approaches, for example, for explainability, um, testing them on your model and uh, finding the best one. Uh, because in nowadays, uh, in modern uh, life, uh, a lot of machine learning algorithms are quite complicated and uh, act like a black box. And it's not always uh, easy to understand uh, the um, outcome of the model and that's why uh, the um, explainability uh, is a really important topic in machine learning and finding, for example, the best approach to uh, handle it. It's a really important task. Next one is probably one of the most uh, interesting type of tasks you uh, may face as a machine learning engineer, and it is developing a proof of concept of uh, some new model. Uh, because it involves the full cycle of machine learning models development uh, from collecting data to processing to feature engineering then selecting the best algorithm for this task uh, and creating a working prototype. Um, it will require like a full set of your skills and a lot of um, 
lot of uh, creativity and at the same time it provides a lot of room for experimentation um, and I think that probably it's the most interesting you um, might face uh, on your day-to-day -day job. Okay, let's move on to the resources. Uh, if you are interested in um, diving into machine learning world, uh, I have some recommendations for you. Uh, to start with the basics, I highly recommend the book uh, Mathematics for Machine Learning. Uh, this, book cover, uh, covers the, this book covers the fundamentals of uh, linear algebra, calculus uh, and uh, statistics and uh, demonstrates how they are applied in machine learning. It's a little bit formal, but I think that it's a great resource for building some uh, mathematical foundation. Uh, for a more fun uh, and um, not <laughs> that fundamental uh, approach, I suggest checking out two YouTube, YouTube channels, StatQuest and uh, FreeBlue One Brown. FreeBlue One Brown is an excellent channel that covers a wide variety of uh, math topics with beautiful and clear visualizations. I especially recommend the essentials of linear algebra and the essentials of calculus. As for StatQuest, it's uh, another a really great channel that covers statistics, probability and some machine learning concepts. Uh, their videos are short, about 20 minutes, and explain complex uh, topics in a very approachable and engaging way. Uh, whenever you are starting uh, a new topic, I really recommend checking if there is a stat quest on this uh, concept because it's probably the easiest and the most fun way to dive into it. Now let's move on to uh, machine learning. Uh, for this topic, I would highly recommend the book Introduction to Statistical Learning, which covers the basics of uh, classical machine learning algorithms from statistical point of view. And um, it's also a little bit formal, but uh, it would give you a um, good understanding of uh, the basics. Another great resource is the book Hands-on Machine Learning, which provides real-life examples of how to implement each algorithm using modern Python tools and frameworks. And also it covers the concept of each algorithm in um, a little bit of details. And uh, it has a lot of um, code examples and exercises, which definitely will help you to understand the topic better and um, deeper. Uh, the machine learning course uh, at uh, mlcourse.ai uh, is also a really great resource and I can recommend it. Uh, it's a very popular self-paced course that offers a good balance of theory and practice. Uh, and you will learn about a lot of um, algorithms in classical machine learning and then apply them to uh, uh, real life problems. And lastly, I'd like to mention Stat StatQuest one more time because uh, they have a lot of videos on uh, machine learning topics and uh, as I uh, said, uh, it's very concise, engaging and easy to understand. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next idea and I think that it might be quite interesting but uh, why not to use machine learning to help you learn machine learning? Um, what an interesting time to be alive! Uh, using ChatGPT to study uh, certain concepts of um, uh, machine learning can be a brilliant idea. Uh, for instance, I recently asked uh, ChatGPT to test my knowledge on random forests by asking me questions ranging from easy to uh, more difficult and it uh, really helped me to identify some blind spots in my understanding uh, and it was <laughs> really fun and uh, enjoyable way to learn. Um, so I would highly recommend uh, using it uh, for your uh, learning purposes. Um, another avenue uh, to explore in data science is uh, participating in competitive data science. Uh, there is a very popular resource named uh, Kaggle where you can uh, participate in data science competitions. And there are a lot of benefits to um, such uh, practice because uh, you would be able to learn from a huge community of data scientists because a lot of people share their ideas and even code pieces uh, on Kaggle. Uh, 
additionally, uh, you would be able to explore new areas outside of your current expertise. For example, if you're working with um, natural language processing, you can uh, try uh, to participate in some competitions in computer vision, for example, uh, just to um, get yourself familiar with the concepts and tools used in this industry, as well as gain some real um, experience in this uh, field. I think that it's a really great opportunity and uh, also there are potential money rewards uh, for the uh, best competitors uh, in each um, competition and it also can be a good motivation to participate in it and last but not least uh, Kaggle provides access to uh, computational resources like GPUs and it might be extremely valuable for uh, the people who do not have access uh, to such resources uh, and would like to train some really uh, huge and complicated models. So definitely uh, check this out. Let's move on to the next one and Next recommendation is uh, to consider working on a pet project. Uh, I would say that it's not only a fun uh, way to apply your knowledge, but it also has a lot of benefits. Uh, for example, for beginners, uh, you would be able to work on a real-life problems uh, that, uh, that, is, that are interesting for you. And uh, you can choose some topic you are really uh, passionate about and just uh, think of the project you might implement in this topic. And um, in addition, pet projects uh, help you develop practical skills uh, that are highly valued by employers. You can gain experience in all stages of uh, data science projects from data acquisition to pre-processing uh, to uh, building some machine learning algorithm then deploying it uh, and I would say that it's uh, definitely worth it to uh, build uh, such uh, expertise and um, these are the skills that are crucial for a job so it's a really great opportunity to gain them. Also, uh, pet projects uh, allow you to experiment with new skills and technologies and uh, you have a freedom to try out new libraries, for example, of frameworks, new algorithms that uh, you uh, haven't had a chance to use before. Also, having some pet projects uh, in your portfolio uh, is a secure way to highlight your CV for potential employers, uh, employers. So I believe there is no reason to postpone it. It's a really great way to uh, learn something new. Okay, now let's uh, summarize what we've discussed today. If you're considering uh, transition into machine learning, keep in mind that it would require from you a lot of patience and time to learn new things and it might be difficult. So be aware of these challenges. Uh, however, uh, it's important to note that the demand for uh, machine learning uh, engineers is lower than for Java developers, so it might be a little bit more complicated for you to find a new position or a project. But it's really interesting as it's a really dynamic and uh, developing field and it will give you an opportunity to uh, work with a absolutely incredible projects and ideas uh, and if you feel that it might be interesting for you just try <laughs> there is uh, no problem with uh, making some pet project or participating in Kaggle competition uh, just to understand if this fits your interests and if you would like to dive deeper in this area okay probably that's all from my side Thank you for your attention and I hope that uh, you found uh, this talk interesting and there were some useful uh, information for you. Thank you, Vika, for sharing your valuable insights with us. It has been an incredibly fruitful talk. And dear friends, if you have any questions uh, about the machine learning profession or anything else, please ask in the comments below and uh, we will feel free to ask Vika. Uh, and I think we make it possible to uh, provide answers. answers. 
and also last but not least subscribe to our channel and hit like the button if you like uh, this video and find it useful thank you and see you next time